Okay, look. Where the show's at? Like, where the show's at? <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? It's Emergency and welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today we are here and we're talking about shows, as per usual. But today we're talking about queer shows. Mm. Arguably also as per usual. Before y'all fight me, because I can already foresee some angst and anger with the stands based on the shows that I put in the thumbnail of this video, I just wanna say, I adore all the shows that are in this thumbnail. I've talked about them extensively. But honestly, I'm tired. <laughs> Am I tired of the genre as a whole? No, not at all. I'm here for all things queer media, television, all of that. But when it comes to the characters that are chosen to represent those stories and tell those stories, I just think that more queer stories can and should be told in TV shows and movies that do not center whiteness and instead shed light on the experience of being a queer person of color. You can think of this video sort of as an extension of the video I did a while ago called Why the Love Interest is Usually White because we're gonna be talking about and referencing a lot of things that I mentioned there and some concepts that I mentioned there in here here under the scope of a queer lens. So in this video, we're basically gonna be talking about representation in an underrepresented group in media. Kind of meta, good one now. How queer and LGBT representation in media currently centers around whiteness as a whole. And finally talking about why racial representation is actually important in queer stories. But before we do any of that, if you are new to the channel and like all things pop culture, TV, and fashion, make sure to hit that subscribe button because I post all of the above every single week. And we'd love to have you here. Also, while you're at it, make sure to leave a like on this video because that helps out so, so much with the algorithm. I'll give you a second to do that right now. Cool. <laughs> and finally, you can follow me on my socials here at Emergency on TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. And heavy on the Instagram. Y'all are missing out. Make sure to follow me over there. All right. I'm seeing you. I'm seeing you. I try to respond as best I can to all of your DMs. So if you want to chit chat with me a little bit more or just see me serving face and outfits, go follow me on Instagram. <laughs> but enough self promo. Let's get into the video. Where are the queer shows of color? First, I wanna start off by saying that honestly, I am so happy that queer shows and queer representation in media recently has been on the rise. We've been covering so many shows that have stories that are queer focused or have queer representation in them, like Heartstopper, First Kill, Elite, Sex Education, Heartbreak High, Young Royals. And specifically, if you're a Young Royals stan, I know this is a very happy time for you because season two is coming out at the beginning of November and we will be covering that. And while I'm super happy that these stories are finally getting their flowers and becoming really mainstream, I can't help but notice that these shows typically center or cater to a specific subsect of the queer community. And that's not to say that these shows are bad by any means. Like personally, when I watch them, I feel really good because I feel like it represents a part of my identity and feel seen in that way. But on the other hand, for myself and for other people of color, our other important identity being race does not necessarily feel as represented in these stories. Which is really important because I feel like those other identities also do inform the way that different stories are told. Like for example, the white gay experience is not going to be the same as the black gay experience just because the cultures are different. And while it's really nice to see the white queer experience be represented, it kind of makes it seem like that's the default because that's all you really see in the mainstream. And usually in these queer shows, the only representation of a person of color, usually not the main character or one of the main character's friends, if even included in the story at all. Like think Young Royals for an example. The story is basically of the main character Wilhelm, who's a white man, with Simone, the person of color being the love interest. First kill, white main character, black love interest. Heartstopper, two white love interests. And then you have a show like Love Victor where the main character is a person of color but fights tooth and nail to end up with a white love interest. And this is where things kind of tie into my last love interest video where it doesn't feel like people of color are able to be in these queer spaces and just be the entire story. Like why could we not have a queer love story with two people of color? Wait, and get this, given that be the case, not have every single story in that situation be centered around trauma. Mm. Mm. Sit in that. <laughs> Sit in that. I can already first see a queer love story between two people of color just ending up being tragic. And one of them getting locked up, unalived, or just something else really traumatic because that is generally, when it comes to pioneering a space in media, historically, that is usually the first iteration of like, people of color in a space. Like we're just getting out of the era where not every black show needs to be about trauma. And we're already back at square one talking about queer dramas, like ooh, ooh. Like the one show that comes to mind when I think of queer BIPOC representation that's centered around blackness or people of color as a whole is Pose. And Pose is a traumatic show. Like it's a really good show, but it is a traumatic show. And also it doesn't take place in modern day. All the other shows that I touched upon are taking place in like modern day. They're giving like a modern teen to young adult perspective on like a queer love story. And I'm just wondering, when are we getting a minority focused queer love story? Because we need it. 
We need it. I'm sorry, we need it. I kind of got off track though. Let's circle back to the point I was making before and how this relates to my past video about why is the love interest always white. For the shows that do include a person of color as a love interest, being the main character or being the supporting one, a lot of the times when this is the case, it seems like the writers of these shows make the characters of color intentionally go out of their way to choose a white person to end up with. It kind of just seems like the way that things are represented right now that if you're going to be a queer racial minority, the only way you can exist is if you're attached to whiteness somehow. And I know that that's a heavy thing to say, but the proof is in the pudding, babes. Like, think back, let's recollect. What shows do you know? Queer shows do you know that have a queer person of color end up with another queer person of color? Let's let's tie those on our head. Let's bookmark that. In comparison, how many of those same subsect of shows do you know that have the queer person of color end up with a white person? Hmm. Right. Right. It's kind of astronomical, huh? <laughs> and again, like I said in my love interest video, this doesn't say that there's anything wrong with that sort of representation. I'm just saying that the lack of any other kind of representation when it comes to having a queer character of color is kind of alarming because what message is that really sending? Like the whole scope of like queer mainstream media is already small enough, but then to only be able to really exist in these shows, if you date or befriend a white person just does not feel good. Like we should be able to have our own stories. And one movie that actually did this fairly recently was Fire Island. And this was huge because spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the movie, you might want to skip past timestamp for after I say this. But for once it's about two Asian American men that end up with each other. Actually choosing each other over a white man, which is, as we know, a first. <laughs> and I feel like that is so huge because like I said, it's so niche. It's just like not the standard when it comes to queer love shows, especially when they include people of color. It's refreshing. It's really good to see, and I wish we'd see more of it. And while that movie had its own set of flaws to critique, it was something fresh. It was something that we hadn't necessarily seen before or seen a lot of before, which is a big contrast to another gay movie that came out recently called Bros. You saw that transition? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Bros is really interesting because it initially was not very well received. In fact, one of the lead actors, Billy Ackner, actually spoke up about the movie not being as well received initially. In a deleted tweet talking about the movie, he says, that's just the world we live in, unfortunately, even with glowing reviews, great Rotten Tomatoes, an A cinema score, etc. straight people, especially in certain parts of the country, just don't show up for bros. And that's disappointing, but it is what it is. And that tweet ended up getting a lot of pushback from the straight community. And a lot of the discussion centered around how people weren't really interested in seeing another white gay millennial storyline, which is valid because like I've said before, that's pretty much been the space up until now, which goes to show that people, even if they're just in Billy Eichner's quote retweets, would like to see something different. Would like to see other stories being told, specifically different stories from different perspectives. Like just imagine if we had a show that had Heartstopper vibes, but black or Latino, or Asian, or really anything else but white. Imagine we had a sapphic show where both characters are people of color. Because I know sapphic shows definitely fall victim to usually having a white love interest. Or even a show that does touch on things like race and culture, and highlight some of the real struggles that queer people of color go through with like their family, friends, and just like their culture as a whole, but still spin it and give us a happy ending. Like give us more happy endings and, and give us hope that like these relationships could actually be a thing and that it's okay and normal to be a queer person of color. That also ends up with another queer person of color. Like I say in every one of these videos, representation is so important because not only is it a model for younger people and younger generations for what our culture and society values and what is realistic or possible for people, but also for young adults and adults, new representation is a great indicator of progress and just allows people to be seen for who they are. Like there are so many different stories to tell from so many diverse points of view. Like, like Hollywood, Netflix, if you're watching, but give us a queer love story focused around minorities. Please, that's all, that's all I ask. That is the purpose of this video. Honestly, it's not to sound smart, give no commentary, nothing. No, I am begging, pleading. <laughs> give us a queer love story of color. I think, I think that's right. Who knows? But yeah, that's all I have to say on that. That's gonna be it for this video, y'all. I know this is a short video, y'all, but I needed to just come out and say this because it needed to be said. But yeah, now I wanna hear your thoughts. What do you think about all this? Are you also in agreement that we need more queer love stories of color? Queer stories centered around people of color. You know, the brain works sometimes. It'd be spotty, but it's working sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> or just your overall thoughts. Let me know what you're thinking down in the comments below. Again, if you're new to the channel, like all things TV, pop culture, and fashion, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss a single thing. We will be talking about Young Royals in the coming weeks, so make sure you stay tuned for that. If you haven't already, leave a like on this video and follow me on my socials at TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter, all at Emergency. But other than that, y'all, thank you so, so much for watching. I've been Emergency, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.